Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This video is about the 10 worst things about living in Sydney that are most commonly heard by people living here. Most of them are first world problems or rich people's problems as some people call them. And you may find them a little bit ridiculous. Please take everything with a pinch of salt because everything I say is based on my own experience and the experience of my friends living here and also from Australians. So I have mixed all the perspectives. Let's go through it and I'll let you decide for yourself if they are valid reasons or not. Bad internet. Before coming to Australia you might have been in other countries using your phone, your laptop and everything goes so smoothly with your internet connection, 4G, even 5G and Wi-Fi. Well it's not the same in Australia, you'll find yourself even in Sydney or other big cities like Melbourne without internet very often. The signal is very weak, it doesn't work all the time. I'm not the only one saying this but Australia is not really the perfect country if your work is dependent on a strong internet connection. No local cuisine. Okay, this one now is very, very debatable. I don't agree with it 100%, even though I hear people complaining about it all the time. What makes a food a local food? In Sydney, you'll be able to find foods as diverse as a chicken schnitzel, which originates in countries like Germany or Austria, or a chicken parmigiana, which is traditionally an Italian dish, but also amazing pizzas throughout the whole country. You'll have amazing pasta dishes, you'll have Asian food from all different countries from around Asia you can possibly imagine, particularly in Southeast Asia, like Thai food and Chinese food, perhaps even different compared to the country of origin where those foods came from. There's so much diversity that, in my opinion, this complaint is actually kind of nonsense. The only thing you can argue is that the traditional Australian food might be a little limited, like the sausage roll or you know, fish and chips, which originates from the British culture. But that's as far as I would go in terms of food diversity in Australia, because trust me, you'll have a lot of different types of food to eat in Sydney. Unpredictable weather. Weather is usually one of the biggest selling points for Australia. And actually, I'll have to say that Australia has an amazing marketing team behind their tourism board because they do a great job at promoting the amazing sunny weather, especially here in Sydney, which is actually sort of rare in some times of the year. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Australia, of course, has plenty of days with sunny weather and depends on the region where you are. But in Sydney, I'll have to say that it actually rains a lot. As a matter of fact, the forecast for this week was for a sunny day. And right now outside, I just heard the thunder and it's raining loads and loads and loads. Overregulation. This is another big topic of conversation in Australia. Some people after moving to Australia or coming here as a tourist, they feel that they are being overprotected, perhaps even having some sort of big brother watching you all the time, lots of CCTV everywhere. Well, this is not a new phenomenon, but it's been growing uh, in the past few years and maybe it's part of the surveillance capitalism that's going on around the world, you know, more and more. And for people moving to Sydney, the number one complaint in terms of regulation is the fact that for everything you do, for every job you take, it feels like you need some sort of certificate and that comes at a cost, of course. There are certainly some particular laws that are kind of annoying in Australia. For example, if you are on a boat tour, on a catamaran, you cannot just put your legs out of the boat, kind of like trying to touch the waves or the water whilst the boat is moving. The reason being that a few people have fallen to the water and then go under the boat. And you know, even if they survived, you know, that incident happened and therefore a law was created. If the police catches you, you'd be fined, and especially the owner of the boat. Some laws are not that intense and they are actually ridiculous in some way. It is illegal to dress up as Robin and Batman. Only a licensed electrician may change a light bulb. And finally, the one that I find the funniest. It is illegal to be drunk in a pub. But there are more serious laws that really made Sydney siders upset. One famous example are the lockout laws that were introduced in 2014, which have now ended in 2020, but they really impacted the night economy of Sydney and some people say that they really kills the nightlife of this city. And that brings me to no lively nightlife and no proper club scene. If you're coming to Australia and you're a party goer, you love the nightlife, you like clubbing, Sydney perhaps will not be the city for you, unfortunately. I have to be honest, it's not really the city to go to raves or big parties or amazing clubs. If you're looking for that in Australia, 
don't come to Sydney. It's not that we don't have any clubs here or bars and it's not like people don't go out, of course we do, but usually things close super early. The lockout laws that I previously mentioned kind of kill the night scene here and people sort of are not used to go out as often anymore or until so late. And you know, it brought some benefits like reduction in crime, etc. But yeah, if you're looking for a very lively nightlife, nah, Sydney is not for you. Australia is far away from everything. Okay, this is a big topic of conversation when you are in Australia. Yes, we all know Australia is very far away from Europe, the US and most other countries. But actually, this is all a bit relative. Depends on where you're from. If you're from Japan, yeah, you're still around 10, 12 hours away, but you're not as far as Europe or North America. Okay. Like if you're European, yes, you'll consider Australia very far. But let's say you are from Thailand. That's not really far. I mean, you can fly to Australia with a flight of maybe nine hours and you'll be landing in one of the big cities like Sydney or Melbourne. It takes you around 25 hours at least to go to Europe that's kind of far if you're used to fly two hours to the country next to you when you're in Europe. So I would say most of all this is a critique or a complaint coming mostly from Europeans. Bad traffic. This one will not affect you if you're one of the lucky ones that has the luxury to walk to your workplace or to the places that you usually hang out like the beach or Circular Quay where the Opera House and the bridge are. But if you have to travel by car to your work Oh yeah, you'll have to face very annoying traffic all over the city. This city was not built to accommodate 6 million people, which we are rapidly approaching. Most of the roads require you to drive at 50 to 60 kilometers per hour maximum, unless you are on a highway, of course. There's CCTV cameras everywhere. They're monitoring your speed. It's stressful to drive in this city, I'm not gonna lie. You will be easily fined just, you know, by going over the speed limit by maybe five kilometers even less. If you want to leave the city quickly to go into a weekend break, you'll find tons and tons of traffic everywhere in all the ways out of the city, even on the paved roads, which are, by the way, very expensive. And this brings me to the topic of limited public transport options. If you're lucky enough to live in the center or near the center or in the eastern suburbs where the coolest beaches are, your public transport offer is great. However, Sydney is not really like a typical European city with a vast metro system underground that takes you everywhere. Nah. You have amazing trains that take you to many places, but if you choose to live, for example, out in the west suburbs of the city to just have some additional freedom to your life and not depend so much on buses and trains, you will need a car or a motorbike at least. Many suburbs of this city are not really well connected with the city center and even if they are it will take you about an hour to get there let alone the time you'll have to walk to your final destination from the train station. There are even some suburbs that are usually for the upper class they don't even have one single bus route going through the neighborhood. Having said this I don't have anything to say personally about the public transport in Sydney because it actually always served me very well. But that's perhaps because I've lived in the CBD, Surrey Hills, and then the Eastern Suburbs, now in Bondi. These areas are very well served. Also, you'll need to understand that the city is huge in terms of its expansion, and that adds up time to your public transport ride or car ride. Sydney is expensive. Similar to how far Australia is, this is very, very relative to your budget, your salary, your profession, you know, your savings. It all depends on the level of your finances and what you find expensive or not. A person earning an Australian wage living in Sydney, as long as it's not the minimum wage, and it's, let's say, 20% above that, will have a pleasant life. Now, of course, if you're going out for food and drinks very often during the week and having your own car, or you know going to parties all the time and buying clothes every so often you know maybe every weekend well i have bad news for you because actually things add up and your salary may not be enough but to be honest that's like in any other place in the world i've been to i have not been anywhere in the world where you just arrive get your salary and you are instantly rich you know that's not how life works having said that yes i get that rents in sydney can be expensive Depends on the suburb you choose. Once again, it all goes with your lifestyle. If you want to live by the beach, there's a cost attached to it. The beach is not for everyone. You just have to accept that. So of course, Australia will be expensive. 
But if you choose to live in the Western suburbs, houses are definitely way more affordable and you'll have way more cash in your hands if you choose those areas. The lifestyle will not go together with your decision though. Things close super early. Perhaps one of the most annoying things for people that just arrived in Australia, especially when they come from countries like in Southern Europe, like Spain, Italy, Portugal, Greece, where things close super late and people have super late dinners. Australia will be sort of annoying to them and that's not an exception in Sydney because things close super early here. But when I say early, I mean early. For example, it's not uncommon to go to a cafe that will close perhaps at 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. Once they've served the breakfast, once they've served the lunches or brunches, that's it. Their mission is accomplished. They start packing up, they start like bringing the tables inside and the cafe will close at around 2, 3 p.m. This is very common, even in Sydney. Of course, you'll have places that will be open until even, let's say, midnight. It depends on the area and yeah, you'll have plenty of restaurants for that but do not expect some sort of european style cafe serving coffees at midnight yes no that doesn't happen here i know that's common in europe people still have their coffees after dinner and they hang out at the cafe until very late hours and they start going moving on to whiskies and other alcoholic beverages that does not exist here things are segregated so you'll have your brunch you'll have your lunch then for the afternoon to be honest i don't know where you go maybe you'll have a barbecue and then in the evening restaurants are open yes sure but the kitchen closes super early like 8 or 9 pm then for the late night or maybe late evening around 11 pm the only thing you can find are pubs and bars and they do not serve food so dinner at 10 pm in your country where you come from do not expect that here unless it's like a takeaway place like a kebab or you know some sort of uh, late night meal okay guys this is all i have to say in terms of the worst things about living in sydney based on my experience and my friend's experience and the australian's experience let me know in the comments if i've forgotten anything without further ado see you next time i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching and like and subscribe for more